This episode is brought to you by Brilliant. Click the link in the description below. Nowadays, you can use 3D printing for pretty much everything. Vegan meat, fancy shoes, or even a wall climbing robot. Wait, wait, what? Anyway, what if you could print your house? That could be a life changer. The winner of NASA's 3D printed Habitat Challenge developed a living environment for Mars. So what about on Earth? I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. NASA's challenge was trying to boost construction technologies and create sustainable housing solutions for our planet and beyond. AI Space Factory's winning project, Marsha, is a vertically oriented egg-shaped 3D printed structure. Made of basalt and renewable bioplastic, its configuration is optimized to resist the difference in pressure and temperature between the interior and exterior Martian environment. But what if you're not willing to relocate 34 million miles away? Well, the good news? You can now buy a hot off the press house without going on an interstellar trip. Squared is selling their first 3D printed house for sale in the US. You can customize it and they'll print it scan by scan in a couple of days thanks to their autonomous robotic construction system called ARC. You can get three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and a garage for a total of 1,400 square feet, all for about $300,000, which is half the price of a similar sized house in the same area. The real estate agent for the property, Stephen King, said he'll be haunted by potential buyers. Okay, not that Stephen King, but speaking of haunted houses, what if I told you 3D printing could give birth to a living house? I'm not sure how I feel about that. Before getting to that, how did 3D printing even start? We need to go back to the early 1980s to find Japanese lawyer Hideo Kodama, who laid the very first layer of 3D printing technology. Kodama developed the rapid prototyping technique, which was the ancestor of 3D printing. A few years later, Charles Hull put his print name on stereolithography, or SLA, which was the first 3D printing technique. But how does SLA work? Well, basically, a UV light hits a liquid acrylic based photosensitive material or a polymer, which then turns solid. The process is also called light curing or photopolymerization. I'm kind of surprised I pronounced that. <laughs> That's a tough one. In general, 3D printing, also known as additive manufacturing, creates a three dimensional object layer by layer, starting from a digital sketch. This concept applies to all 3D printing processes, but based on which technique you go for, the raw material and the layering process might change. During the 1990s, the development of two further technologies, selective laser sintering, which is SLS, and fused deposition modeling, which is FDM, heated up the 3D printle nozzle race. Yeah, I keep making bad jokes. These are currently the two most widely used 3D printing techniques. Also, the printer company Solidscape improved precision in additive manufacturing by introducing the dot-on-dot -dot process, which was based on polymer jetting. By the end of the following decade, we see 3D printing becoming more accessible to designers. In 2008, people could use an online 3D printing market called Shapeways, where you could send your design through and they would print it out and mail it to you. A sort of 3D printing e-commerce. And just a year later, MakerBot invented DIY 3D printing. They provided an open source kit for creating 3D printers and products. But when did 3D printing hit the housing business? In 2013, Dust Architects started a research project inspired by Amsterdam's canal houses. Using mostly bioplastic as a raw material, the architecture studio printed out some kind of Lego blocks and stuck them on top of each other. They used the FDM technique to build their eight square meter micro house. Now, although this seems to be the first house ever 3D printed in the world, it's technically still under construction. And in 2014, the Chinese company Winsoon churned out 10 houses in 24 hours by feeding recycled materials to a 3D printer. Each of the small houses was priced at $5,000 because of the low labor that was needed to build it, which sounds kind of crazy, but that's not the craziest part. What if you could print out a house that fixes itself? Believe it or not, that's a real project from the US Department of Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, also known as DARPA. You gotta love government agency acronyms. With their Engineering Living Materials Program, also known as ELM, researchers are exploring the potential of living biomaterials that could quickly grow, self-repair, or adapt to the surrounding environment. Bone, skin, coral, mushrooms, you name it, they print it. The project's aim is twofold. First, in the short term, the design of scaffoldings as growing support for living cells. Secondly, in the long run, incorporating structural features into the genome of biological systems so they can be self-supportive. Now, recently, the researchers developed a method of creating living brick that breathes in CO2 and spits out calcium carbonate, a compound used to produce cement. But has anybody ever lived in a 3D printed house? The answer is yes. A French family was the first in the world to make the move in 2017. 
A four bedroom property was built with curved walls to minimize humidity and included digital controls for disabled people. Now, short of windows, doors, and a roof, builders, or should I say printers, got the framework out in 54 hours. Its construction cost, which was 176,000 pounds, was 20% cheaper than a standard house of a similar footprint. So what's the potential of a 3D printed house? Well, it's faster delivery, more flexible design, lower cost, and more sustainable. From an environmental standpoint, 3D printing minimizes waste since components are printed on demand and with high accuracy. To add to that, it may be more eco-friendly than traditional construction when using natural materials that can be recycled, like mud or bamboo. In that case, the printed structure would be near zero waste. Just like the world's first 3D printed net zero energy community that the company Mighty Buildings is creating in Palm Springs. Using their 3D printed panels made of light stone material and steel, they print only the essential components. This saves up to five pounds of waste per square foot compared to traditional home construction. They said that each of the 15 homes will save 2000 kilograms of CO2 emissions. The low carbon houses will get their energy from solar panels and the homeowners can opt for Tesla Powerwall batteries and EV charging points too. The cheapest house sold for $595,000 and is 1,450 square feet. And did I mention that they also come with swimming pools? Now, altogether, building and construction sectors emit about 40% of all energy-related CO2 emissions. Concrete production plays a major part in this. And making conventional Portland cement accounts for 8% of global carbon emissions. Now, when assessing the impact of 3D printing versus building with concrete, the data is a little controversial. Based on one study using a contour crafting technique saves seven tons of raw material waste and about 80% of CO2 emissions compared to a conventional concrete process. On the other hand, a recent life cycle assessment or LCA shows that when using recycled concrete for 3D printing, you end up with a higher environmental impact than traditional methods. It's because the 3D printing process is more cement thirsty. But what about the process itself? It's great that you can get a 3D printed house pretty fast, but you need to add additives to speed up the layer's hardening process. And apparently those could pollute the indoor air. Also when feeding plastic to a 3D printer, the melting process releases volatile organic compounds or VOCs. When looking at the price tag, the economic impact appears to be positive. UK researchers found that 3D printing can save up to 35% off a standard house's price. The big reason is from a lower amount of material and labor needed. That's why 3D printed houses could meet the demand for social housing. And this is already starting to happen. Two companies, Icon and New Story, joined forces to provide affordable homes to 500 low-income families in the Mexican town of Tabasco. Icon also partnered with Mobile Loaves and Fishes to print a community-first village in less than 27 hours for homeless people. Although it may be a good solution for cheap shelters in developing areas, 3D printing could be a problem for countries that have a lot of construction workers or low labor cost. Now remember Squared, their, their quick, cheap 3D printed house I mentioned earlier? Well, it took only three people to complete that project. If you compare that to a residential home built the usual way, it would take up to 32 workers. But the labor reduction could go even further than that. An Austrian architect combined robotics with building information modeling to design the Museum of Contemporary Art and Planning Exhibition in Shenzhen, China. With this advanced 3D printing technology, he said the number of workers needed on site went from 160 to only eight, which is, again, <laughs> crazy. It seems 3D printing has already passed proof of concept. And even though there are still challenges to overcome, 3D printed homes hold a lot of promise for readily available and cheap housing in the future. So how fast will private 3D homes spread on the market? Remember that first one on sale in the US? Well, Icon has got the second one, in press, <laughs> already. Actually, they've got way more than one. They're building a housing complex in Texas and pricing each of the homes at $450,000, which is just about the average house price in the same area. Even though they constructed the second floor the old fashioned way, the company 3D printed the first floor using their lava cream material, a special concrete they claim is more resistant to weathering. They also say that it's got stronger thermal properties, which means it gets better insulation value, which is why Icon claims the 3D printed floor is more energy efficient and disaster proof than standard construction. But Dubai is ahead of the printing queue. In 2019, its municipality hired Apis Core, one of the 3D printing construction leaders. They designed the world's largest 3D printing building ever, with a height of nearly 10 meters and a footprint of 640 square meters. The Russian company completed the office space in two weeks and used a robotic arm construction 3D printer. The Emirate state has also printed a clear roadmap to drive 3D printing adoption. They committed to use the technology for creating 25% of their buildings by 2025. 
The market agency BusinessWire predicted the global market for 3D printing construction to grow at a rate of 247% over the next couple of years, reaching a value of $114 million. But there's a reason why we could build our hopes on 3D printed homes. One of the main limitations for projects so far has been complying with local building regulations. But in 2019, two companies, Synconomy and Forge New, joined forces to develop the first fully approved 3D home technology in the US. A year later, the German company Perry designed a residential building that got the all clear from the local government. They built their two-story house with a Cobod 3D printer that takes just five minutes to raise one square meter of double skin wall. So will 3D printing change the way we live? It might. I mean, it clearly seems to be appealing for a low carbon construction in the future. And the lower labor requirements makes it a more affordable option compared to standard housing. It's true that not many projects have achieved full compliance with building codes yet, but 3D printing homes are starting to spring up like mushrooms. Maybe they'll be even made of mushrooms. If you're fascinated by 3D printing and structures and want to dig a little deeper into the physics of how things like this work, I'd strongly recommend checking out the Physics of Everyday course at Brilliant. It's one of my favorites from Brilliant and helped me wrap my head around how beam and truss systems work in bridges and why and how skyscrapers are designed the way they are. It's really cool stuff. But even if physics doesn't matter to you, they have over 60 courses including topics in computer science, quantum mechanics, and mathematics. They have something for everybody. All of the concepts are taught through fun, interactive challenges to help you understand the why of something, not just the how. It helps to develop your intuition, which is my absolutely favorite part about Brilliant, and it taps into the way I learn. Go to brilliant.org slash undecided to sign up for free. The first 200 people will get 20% off their annual premium membership, and thanks to Brilliant and to all of you for supporting the channel. So would you want to live in a 3D printed home? Jump into the comments and let me know. If you like this video, be sure to check out one of the ones I have linked to right here. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you think I've earned it. And a special thank you to all of my patrons and a big welcome to new Supporter Plus member, Derek Coburn, and my new producer, Brian Newton. And as always, thanks to all of you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.